everyone. It is Aging Grateful. I'm Bobby. I'm Cedric. And this video that we're going to be talking about today uh, is the misconceptions about Mexico. Yeah. There's 10 things that you need to stop believing about Mexico. Okay. So let's get into it. <laughs> misconceptions and we came up with a list of 10 things and these are probably the most 10 talked about things uh, we recently went back to the states and every time we talk to people about living in Mexico it's like these same things come up every single time oh my gosh and so. I'm gonna let uh, say it start <laughs> this video because uh, uncle of mine who shall be nameless <laughs> uncle Ray you know who you are uh, said that I don't give Cedric a chance or opportunity to talk, so here you go, Uncle well, Ray. Everybody know I'm an introvert. In what way? I'm introverted. Okay. He's <laughs> introverted, y'all. But um, go ahead. The first thing is you're not going to buy a house for $25,000. Um, well, you might buy a house for twenty five thousand dollars, but it ain't gonna be nothing but, that you probably gonna want to live in. But you, yeah, I was gonna say, would you want to live in it? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, the reality of the matter is, is that um, Mexico or any place abroad, for that matter, things are changing. You know, the things are becoming more um, costly or expensive. Um, now, I'm not saying that you know you. Come here and you have to buy a you know a multi-million dollar home but definitely uh we would like to change the perception mm -hmm. or to talk about the misconception uh, or perception of people thinking that you can come to any place abroad and buy a property for like you know five dollars no yeah, I mean the the economy is in Mexico particularly is getting strong. So, oh, you know, yeah. it's it's yeah. I, I don't see where you, I mean, like I said, there, I'm sure you can find a house for twenty five, just like you can find a house in the U S. for twenty five thousand dollars, right? So it's just a matter. But but the norm is, you know, people think, oh, I could just go over there and you know spend twenty five, thirty grand and buy me a nice house and be living on the beach and all that type of stuff, and that's just not not the case. No. Not the case. No, get that out of your mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which brings us to point number two. Yes, Mexico does have a middle class. I hear so much that Mexicans are either rich or they're poor. They definitely have a middle class. Yes. Um, yes. A middle working blue collar class, just like we like we do in in the uh, United States. As a matter of fact. The neighborhood we live in is a is a blue collar middle class neighborhood. Uh, yes, we would consider that the case. You yeah. know, there are people here who, you know, are, are working, um, and they are uh, have some really great jobs, yeah. um, and are making a, a really good living for themselves. So, you know, there there is the middle class, yeah. and we want people to know that just like anywhere else. They, they do have a middle, a, a middle class. Yeah. Yes. And they, they, our neighbors, they got cars, two cars, two, three cars. Absolutely. Um, you know, the average house in our neighborhood is maybe about 200,000 USD. Or more. Or more, definitely. Yeah, somewhere um, between the 200 and $400,000 range. Um, USD right. um, is uh, in this neighborhood or this community. So, yes, they do have that. Yeah, they get up and go to work every morning and, you know, all that. So, it, it's, it's, it's no different. Um, I don't know why people think it's either rich or poor. Rich or poor. Yeah, you're either really rich or you're poor and no. begging on the streets. That's not the case. No. Which will bring us to our third point here. Yeah. And Mexico is not a third world country. Oh my gosh. Well, if I had a dollar <laughs> for every time somebody tells us this one and the next 
point that we're gonna make here. Oh my gosh, we would be. Yeah, we would be retired. We right would now. be rich, rich. Absolutely, just off of the uh, response that we have to give and provide to people. Mexico is not a third world country. They are on their way up. Um, there's things going on between the U.S. and Mexico uh, called nearshoring, where they're bringing businesses. The United States is bringing a lot of businesses or uh, the United States and Mexico have uh, contracts uh, bringing businesses here and there to the United States. Um, they, I mean, my goodness, the tech industry here. Yeah, the tech industry is here. I mean, they, it's just, it's, it's, it's booming. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of tech. It's a lot of tech and integration in the day to day things um, that we do. Some things we pay for, and the tech is there. The infrastructure. My um, train. I mean, yeah, they got trains, subways, uh, you know, every, I mean. Arizona still don't have a, a, subway. a subway or a train. But, I mean, they got the little, you know, the little, what do you call it? The, the, little, the, the little train that goes up to, the tour train that goes yeah. up to the uh, flagstaff. Whatever. Yes, but, I mean, we're talking about they have here great infrastructure. The bus systems are yeah. bar not, I mean. Oh my God! Yeah, it's, it's, it's third uh, world where. Yeah. Um, I, I this is it just boggles my mind the amount of times that we have to say that and the amount of times that we hear. Yeah, like, um, oh, you live in Mexico. Why don't you want to move to that third world country? I'm absolutely. Like, well. Which leads us to point number four. The cartel is not interested in you. Say hello to my little friend. So, well, unless you're doing cartel things. They may be interested <laughs> in you if you're looking for it. Yeah. But general, just off the cuff, being a part of living in this, you know, country and in this community that we're in, look, the cartel is not interested in you. There's so much about tourism that yeah. is important. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it just, <laughs> I mean, just when we were in Chicago, I was like, you mentioned, oh, you live in Mexico, man, the cartel, this, the cartel, that. But then that 4th of July weekend, it was, you know, 119 shootings and 19 in, people dead in Chicago. In, in Chicago alone. So, okay, but we worried about the cartel. Um, and just a little side note. We have cartels in the, US, the yeah. United States, but I, I digress. Yeah. I digress. But we just want you to know. Yeah, it's nothing you have to worry about. Yeah, no. Unless you're out doing cartels. Unless thing. you're trying to find <laughs> the things that the cartels are into, and you want to want to run across yeah. them. Want to run that circle? What they say? Ever around to find out? Yeah. Ever around to find out? Yeah. No, but no, no. <laughs> and uh, that leads us to number five. Kidnap. We're going to be kidnapped. Oh, okay. Missed one. You can get back to kidnap. You're not going to be kidnapped. Uh, so, you know, we would hear all the time, oh my gosh, you're going to Mexico, you're going to be kidnapped. Oh my gosh, you better be careful out there, you're going to be kidnapped. Don't be out there in the evening time, you're going to get kidnapped. And I'm telling you that there are alerts in the United States of people getting kidnapped. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Um, and we not we're not kidnapped. Just so we are we are clear, I wasn't kidnapped and got let go so that I can go to the United States uh, here recently to come back to Mexico to be kidnapped. That is not what happened. We we are we are here. Um, so you know, not downplaying. You know, people being kidnapped, right, not yeah. by by no means, because that absolutely is a thing. But we just want you to know that that thing happens everywhere. Right. It is. It is not. Mexico does not have the stamp on kidnapping. Like, no. Kidnapping happens everywhere. As a matter of fact, when we lived in Arizona, there was a known area not too far from where we even lived uh, 
that was known for people ending up missing. Yeah, teenagers for trafficking. Teenagers tra 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 for trafficking, yeah. absolutely. We would never have let our children actually in that area. I remember a couple of times our, our one of our daughters was asking, can she be dropped off there so she can meet her friends? Absolutely not. Tell no, tell no, 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 no. Yeah. In the States. Now here where we are, she can walk wherever she wants to pretty much. She can walk around and, and we're fine. And I had never felt comfortable like that where we were. I, yeah. I, I never, I, I was anxiety, panic about yeah. that. But not here, I don't, I don't feel that here. So mm -hmm. um, just no, no. It's not, on, it's not on our list of things to do to be kidnapped. It's not. Which brings us to number six. Uh, Mexicans flooding the U.S. through the borders. Oh my God. <laughs> I would love to take a pause on this because we see in social media, we see news, and not that we pay attention to it often because we try to disconnect from it as much as possible and being here allows us the opportunity to do that. But in some semblance, we still stay connected because we do have our family and, and, and children that still live in the States. So the people that, majority of people that you see flooding, or they say flooding, I just say- Crossing the border. Crossing the border to the United States are not Mexican. That's fact. These men have been walking for days, part of their desperate journey north. We have to keep going, says this man, because the situation in El Salvador is very dangerous. Violence and poverty have forced thousands to flee. To get north gives you hope of a better life. Una vida mejor. Vicklin says it's a result of Mexico's crackdown on its southern border, a multi-million dollar program partially funded by the United States. But it hasn't stopped the migrants. Last year, La 72 housed more than 11,000. 16-year-old Kevin Flores says gangs threatened to kill him in Honduras. He showed us where he crossed into Mexico. How long did that take? ¿Cuánto tiempo te tardaste? Como tres días caminando. Three days walking. He wants to get to New York to be with his sisters. His fastest option is also the most dangerous, jumping on a northbound train. Now, they have to travel through Mexico to get? Yeah, I mean, you're, the Mexico is the only landmass besides Canada that's connected to the U.S. So people are coming from all these other countries. They come over to Mexico and then they walk up and get up to the border and then they cross. Mexico has the same problem that the U.S. has with people coming over, you know, crossing you know, into the country illegally. So they got people set up tents and camps and everything because they're trying to make their way to the U.S. Absolutely. So when they come up through Mexico, the narrative is, you know, all these Mexicans are, are coming to America illegally crossing the border and flooding the border and we get, why are you trying to move to Mexico and Mexico and Mexicans trying to come to the U.S. Say that there aren't Mexicans that come to the, or try to go to the U.S. Right. to find better lives, but that's not the, the majority of what you see or what they're trying to, you know, show. The narrative right and a lot of times when that is happening they're doing that again like you say for the better quality of life but also what a lot of them do is stack their money while they're working and then come back yeah. to mexico because this is really where they want to be this yeah. is where they call home right and so um another thing is you'd be surprised at the number of united states citizens and maybe canadians who are also here in Mexico illegally as well. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised to learn that that people are actually doing the same on the <laughs> other side of the fence. We are not one of them. We are residents, <laughs> but uh, you would definitely be surprised because the thing is, is that um, the United States does not show that or the, keep track of the numbers of people who are uh, illegally living from the United States in Mexico. So um, we never ever hear anything about that and probably never will, to be quite honest with mm -hmm. you. So um, yeah, so we wanna make sure that we 
pay respects to that fact of that misconception, right? Yeah. Which brings us to number seven. Uh, Mexico is not just one big place. Oh my gosh, people say, <laughs> oh my God, you going to Mexico? Oh my goodness, you know, Mexico is surrounded by that water or all that sand and the, first of all. Or the violence in Mexico, this Yes, that, yes, you know. or something happened in mm -hmm. one area of Mexico. People call or text us um, to see if we're okay. Right. And I always, my response now is, if you are in Florida and something happens in California, should I call you to find out if you're okay? That's kind of the same thing that people are doing to us. Yeah, Mexico has 32 states. Oh my, God, yes. Like we have states, they have <laughs> states. It's a, it's a, Mexico is a country. Right. They have individual states and might I add, uh, individual temperate, climate, yeah. culture, community, language, it's, language, language it's, is it, yeah, yeah, it's as, as vast as it is in the United States. It is here. Uh, you ha have your beaches in the warm weather and you have your cold weather pl places. Um, you have low uh, flatlands and then you have mountains, right? Like yeah, the altitude can get high, it can be low. It is a, a vast, vast uh, uh, wealth of, of differences in these individual states here in Mexico, just like in the United States. So if something happens in Mexico, maybe get up the little geographic <laughs> the globe. Yeah, map, map and see what cities that these things may be occurring in to see if they are near wherever you're, you know, you're thinking. So right. you you can't just lump it all as Mexico is just one thing. It is not, it is just as diverse as it is in the United States and probably other places as well. It is like one land mass mm -hmm. of just nothing, just no, it's beautiful. But yes, so which leads us to number eight. Uh, Mexico is not cheap. Uh, kind of circled back to the house and stuff yes. from earlier. But. It may be cheaper than what you may be used to and may not even be that depending yeah, upon where, where you, you live. Right. Um, it is, it depends upon the person. How about that? It depends upon the person. And we need to stop saying that or hearing Mexico is cheap. It is, it is, it's for us, maybe a little bit more cheaper than what we were used to spending. Can it get expensive and pricey? Absolutely. 1,000%. <laughs> uh, it just depends on your cost of living, right? Your budget. Um, what you're trying, where you're trying to live. Yeah, um, what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, the, th the thing to keep in mind is this, that you need to st stick to your own budget and your own reality and stop listening to all of us tell you what's cheap and what's not cheap because yeah. it it is really contingent upon you. What we may find as a good deal may not be a good deal to, to you. Right. We, we have to get out of that. And some places in Mexico are becoming extremely costly and that is also due to uh, expats. Yeah, and um, it's due to yeah. the economy is growing too. So it's, it's a little of both. You know, yes. it's the expat, but it's the economy is, is right. getting strong. And you, that is 1000% correct. Also too, you have to think about it. A lot of things don't happen without, you know, even the government getting involved as far as what price points, you know, can be as well. So there's a lot of variables to that, if you want to say it that way. But we don't want anybody to think that you come to Mexico with, you know, 50 bucks in your pocket and you can live, you know, grand life. And that is that is definitely not what we want to project in Mexico. Mexico is uh, as a booming, booming ecosystem. And we need to respect that. 
Um, the culture is incredible and rich, um, and we need to embrace and, and um, celebrate that. And we have to understand that the economy is what the economy is, and we either fall into it. Um, I've even seen on uh, some of these um, groups and things like that online where people are of this perception that the only reason why people move to Mexico is so that they can live um, cheaply. Um, and that is, that is definitely not the case either. It is, you know, for us, we are planning for, uh, you know, retirement, so that is um, uh, somewhat of a factor of savings, saving more money than what we were saving in the States. Right. But also to understand here that that's not the only uh, reason why the move was made. We have a truly better quality of life here. I don't care if you're paying $800 a month USD for a place to live or you're paying 4,000 USD a month to live here. There are other reasons outside of cost uh, for living in um, the place that we have chosen to live abroad, right? And we are loving this and it's it's not just about dollars. Right. Um, and it's okay for you if you are coming and living abroad to just redefine your life and want to spend you know, the $2,000, $3,000 USD. Sure. Don't let anybody stop you from living your dream um, and or to tell you that you need to be living Cheaper, below this, or, or, right? Yeah. Because you happen to be living in a, abroad or in another country. Yeah. Do you, boo. Celebrate you. Um, and if that's what you choose to do, so be it, right? But we just can't, we can't keep getting into the mindset that the reason why you move someplace is because of how cheap it is. If that is your reason, that's fine. But that's not everybody's reason. And we don't want that perception to be um, given. Right. Which leads us to number nine. Uh, not everything is great in Mexico. But it's great to us. Yeah. Um, and what we mean by that is, um, you, uh, for those of you who have been following our journey, um, you know, along the way since we started from before we moved abroad to where we are now, uh, we've had some hiccups. I mean, we've had some situations, some issues, some of which you guys have seen, um, you know, like hurricanes, going through hurricanes, um, being without electric or water for a while. Um, I broke my foot. Um, you know, we, there's been transition from uh, being in one place and moving to another place. Um, you know, there's some things that, um, as far as the residency process and being uh, stuck here while we were waiting because, you know, things like the printer broke down or there was something wrong with the number here or there on the residency requirement. We've had some situations and hiccups that were not necessarily things to celebrate, but Mexico overall is still great to us. There's a lot of things that occur here also in Mexico, right? That we may not agree with or like, right? But that's everywhere. Yeah, I think there's just some things you have to get used to. Right. Um, and that's with anywhere you go, right? Yeah. There's um, no perfect place is what we're saying. Right, and there's, I mean, there's processes you have to do. Things are done different. You definitely got to have a lot more patience, um, you know. Or be able to do without some things, yeah. right? Um, and change your mindset on a lot of, of expectations because, you know, a lot of times we do come with our mindsets or preconceived notions of what we believe things should be. And then when they're not, we may tend to either get upset or discouraged. Um, and um, just to know that that's just a part of life in general. There's there's nothing perfect about where we were at either, right. you know, um, but we called it home. And so now we have this new place called home. We definitely want to uh, let people know that, yeah, you know, you're gonna see so many people on YouTube or, or other social media platforms 
who talk about the great things and the great views, and we also do the same thing, but we also hope that we um, showcase, you know, our everyday challenges and things that happen. And so not everything is great, and we don't want everybody to get this picture that it's a 100% perfect lifestyle that we're living. Yeah. Um, no, we have everyday challenges just like everybody else, wherever they are. We are just choosing that this is where we want to be to endure, experience whatever life ha has for us, right? Yeah. Which leads us to number 10. Number 10. Uh, oh, this one. They hate black people. Or people of color. They're people of color. Yeah. So, we've had a lot of people talk and ask us about how um, our, I will say our other family members, our, new, <laughs> our other family members view us um, here in Mexico. And we need to say this, um, we've experienced nothing but love. I got nothing but love for you, baby. Yeah. Right. Um, by those who are uh, born in this country, who are um, locals, we have personally experienced um, open arms, um, letting us into their own family, um, showing us truly that we are human beings. I mean, what it was. Yeah, your I mean, experience? it's that. I've, I've more than once, I've been walking down the street and, you know, some locals yell out, hey, my people, you know, <laughs> you know things like that. So, yeah, I haven't had any negative experiences towards, you know, with the local. With the locals. Yes, we have not, um, I mean, they stop by and love on us, knock on our doors and bring us like, you know, food and, and little trinkets and have extended their own like vehicles. Like yeah, who just, is, you just got this vehicle and you're like, hey, already. yeah, what they say? <laughs> Come by and pick, you know, you want to go somewhere here, come get in my car. Come get in my car, come get my car and go where you, excuse me, where, where, where do they do that at? You, you just, you just gonna give me your keys, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Like we've literally had people stop us and talk about how beautiful our skin is and, um, how much they, they love us and we don't get to hear that much in the United States from that perspective and it's sad to say it like that yeah. but this is our reality and this is our experience to be loved on in this way um, for I will speak for myself is is uh, is beautiful it is reassuring that we have a space um, where we can just be um, and to be able to relish that is, is, is magical. It, it is, it is m magical to be seen, but also to not be seen at the same time, if that makes sense. And, um, I love, I love it. I love that I can say that the skin, um, and who I am as a human being is, is beautiful. Um, and I already knew we were beautiful beforehand, so, you know, I'm there. But to have other people to celebrate and relish in that as much as I want to celebrate and relish who they are and their culture. And um, it, it's just, it's a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. Beautiful feeling? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, anything else? Yep, that's about it. Well, uh, we hope that uh, you enjoyed this video right yeah and uh looking forward to many more videos many more conversations to be had also stop believing these things if you are believing these things <laughs> stop believing these misconceptions um and i'm sure there are more that we have missed but um just something to think about